Good morning. Good morning. What a joyous day it is, a grand day to gather together to worship our living God. We are so grateful for your presence this morning that you have responded to God's call to gather with this faith community on this day for worship. And we especially welcome guests into our midst this morning. Thank you for joining us here at Opekin Church, the historic church with a living faith. We are, are especially grateful that you could be here today, and we hope that you will return to worship and share and serve with us. I also invite our guests to, if you're a first-time guest, to fill out one of those yellow guest cards you'll find in the pew racks in front of you. Just fill that out and drop it in the offering plate so we can get to know you better. And I invite each person to pass the Ministry of Friendship folder and encourage you to reach out to one another as we pass the peace this morning. It indeed is a special day, Christian Family Sunday here at Opekin, a day also Mother's Day when we honor our moms and women of faith in our midst. We are so grateful for you you will see in your announcements today that our Christian education team is honoring our moms and women of faith through the donation of five beautifully crafted aprons for our church kitchen. They have been crafted and designed by our own Susanna Shade, and there's an example out in the gathering area. You can see that. Uh, it's on a mannequin out there. When I was coming into the gathering area a couple times this week, I was like, oh my gosh, there's a person standing there. Congratulations to you, moms. There's also a couple jokes in here about uh, moms and our families. I call those to your attention. It's also a day when we honor our graduating seniors and we receive our confirmation class. So a grand day indeed. Tonight we'll also have worship. Uh, more casual, uh, praise-centered worship, open-door worship in our memorial sanctuary. That's at 6.30. It's preceded, preceded by a covered dish. Uh, the focus is on um, Mexico, particularly Baja. There will be a special offering for our Baja mission trip in July, and there'll be a taco bar. You can bring things for the taco bar as part of the covered dish. Our men of Opekin gathering tomorrow night, 6 o'clock, over at Chick-fil-A on Pleasant Valley Road. Uh, then back here in the Bajant Room, we look forward to a baseball-centered program. Uh, author Austin Gisrael will be here. He recently wrote the book, Fathers, Sons, and Holy Ghosts, Baseball as a Spiritual Experience. So we look forward to that. We'll also be sponsoring June the 7th. Uh, Opekin out at the Royals game, so mark that date on your calendar. Uh, that is for the whole church, not just for our men. So that looks to be a fun time for everyone. Next Sunday, the day of Pentecost, remember to wear red. Uh, it's also Communion Sunday, and we'll receive the Pentecost offering, and there's information in your worship order about that. Don't forget Vacation Bible School registration ongoing out in the gathering area, our focus on Jonah this year, classes from age four through the fifth grade, through the eighth grade, excuse me, and then high schoolers can volunteer to help. So we look forward to a great Bible school. I'll be facilitating the adult class. Don't forget to sign up and smile for our church directory. I know Becky Proctor will be out there, Debbie Bender, signing people up after worship today. I commend all the other announcements to your attention, and let me say happy Mother's Day again to Shirley Tumlin, proud mother and grandmother, and our liturgist this morning. We're grateful for your leadership, Shirley. Our gathering song number 452, Open the Eyes of My Heart, Lord, all those who are able invited to stand. <laughs> Oh, 
Please remain standing for the call to worship. When we are troubled and perplexed, anxious and discouraged, there is one who seeks us. One who meets us. One who heals us. One whose love washes over us and sets us free for joy. This one is Jesus Christ our Lord. Come, let us worship. And bow down to the Lord of our hearts, the Lord of our lives, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Thank you. You may be seated. Our call to confession. God lovers, let us repent of those things that have drawn us away from God and our neighbors, that we may receive the joy of forgiveness. Please join in the unison prayer of confession, followed by moments of silent prayer. Holy God, Grant us faith to confess our sin and seek your mercy. There are barren places in our lives where we have wandered far from you. We have listened to voices that distract us from your call. We have submitted to powers that compete for our loyalty to you. We have not taken the hand you offer to lead us out of forsaken and into your holy ways. We have acknowledged the Lordship of Christ with our lips, but we have not honored him with our lives. 
forgive us, quench our thirst for you from the rock of our salvation, and let your love well up with us and eternal life. Speak tenderly to us of your presence. Feed us with your word. Deliver us from evil. Let us enter into your kingdom and send us to serve you by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hear now these words of assurance. The promise of our faith is that we are already forgiven and in Christ's name given the power to rise up and subdue all that separates us from God and each other. Receive the Holy Spirit and be empowered to be witnesses of God's resurrection power in Jesus Christ. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ we are May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. I'm going to sit on the front pew for the honoring of the graduates if you want to sit there. That's nice. I like to see them. Yep. Okay, that's fine.
interested in, don't you? You got so much stuff. That's incredible. This kid's a bunch of little things. I do it. We're privileged to take a few moments this morning to honor our high school graduates of 2018. You will see them listed on page 8 in your bulletin. This is a time of great emotion and celebration at the milestone in these lives of these young people. Caps and gowns are waiting to be worn in the coming days for the many graduation ceremonies that will be held. Our high school seniors are dear to their families and to their Opecan Church family. At this time, I would like to invite all high school seniors that are present to come and line up right in front of us. Hustle on down. <laughs> You're young, you still have a lot of energy. This is a moment for you as we highlight your accomplishments. Bailey Cooper will be graduating from Sharando High School. Bailey has been a member of the Indoor Drumline for the past two years, a member of the Symphonic and Marching Bands all four years of high school. He served as band president during his senior year. Bailey has lettered in academics and in band. He has been self-employed. Bailey will be attending Lord Fairfax Community College in the fall to obtain his real estate license. Jack Young Youngblood will be graduating from James Wood High School. Jack is a member of the National Honor Society and a student in the Gifted Independent Study Program. Yay, Jack! Um, <laughs> <laughs> Um, and he's working with local physical therapists. He was on the varsity football and wrestling teams for Jameswood High School. Jack earned his Eagle Scout Award. His Eagle Scout project was installing an irrigation system for Opekin's Cremains Memorial Garden. Jack currently serves as an assistant scoutmaster for Troop 1. He has received certificates for academic excellence and all academic award for football. Jack has volunteered his time at Highland Food Pantry, Stop Hunger Now, Watts, and on mission trips. He has worked as a lifeguard and swim instructor for Frederick County Parks and Rec, and also as a groundskeeper for a landscaping company. Jack will be attending West Virginia University in the fall to study health science and physical therapy. Go Mountaineers! Rachel, Rachel Burton will be graduating from Sharando High School. Rachel has played volleyball and been on the track team all four years of high school. She received varsity letters for both sports. She is a member of the National Honor Society and has received multiple academic awards. Rachel works at Cracker Barrel as a cashier. Rachel will be attending Virginia Tech in the fall to study neuroscience. Brenda Hathaway will be graduating from Sharando High School. Brenda, Bre, sorry. <laughs> Brenda is a gifted independent study student, a member of the Red Cross Club, 4-H, and Quiz Bowl. She, is, she has volunteered her time at the library and hospital and done internships at Winchester Medical Center. She is a member of the National Honor Society. Brenda won first place in a 4-H regional competition and was awarded the Student of the Year Award for History and Spanish. Brenna is the recipient of a $5,000 International Eagle, Eagle Scholarship, which recognizes an international eagle in school business, Lisa, who is Lisa Fry from our church. This award recognizes public education and offers support to Brenna and both of her parents, who are educators. 
Brenna will be attending VCU in the fall to major in biology. Kristen Blake will be graduating from John Hanley High School. Kristen has served as the president of the National Honor Society and the Key Club Blood Drive chairperson. She has been a member of DECA, the French National Honor Society, Hanley Cross Country, Swimming, and Track and Field teams. She has been involved in the Strikov Academy of Ballet of Virginia Youth Ballet and has served on youth council at Opekin Church. Kristen was named All-Conference in Cross Country, Swimming, and Track and Field, and All-Region in Cross Country and Track and Field. She attended Girls State and was a Golden Gavel winner. She has worked as a lifeguard at Stonebrook for three years and did an internship at Yount, Hyde, and Barber. Kristen will be attending the University of Virginia in the fall. Anne Marie Kelly will be graduating from Sharando High School. Anne Marie has been on the indoor and outdoor track teams, a member of the National Honor Society, Future Business Leaders of America, and part of student government as the senior class president. Anne Marie was a presenter at the Astronomers Conference and a state competition for National History Day. She set a track record for the four by, four by 100 meter relay. She is also a governor's scholar. Anne Marie has worked at Body Renew Daycare and currently works at Outback Steakhouse. Anne Marie will be attending the University of Virginia in the fall to study astronomy and physics. Erica Reed will be graduating from Millbrook High School. Erica has been a member of DECA for four years and on the varsity girls basketball team for all four years. She has earned all district, all conference, and all region player, as well as being selected as the Winchester Star Player of the Year for girls basketball. She was an instrumental part of the team that won the 2008 state championship. Erica has worked at Frederick County Parks and Recreation. Erica plans to attend a four-year college and play basketball. Andy Gray will be graduating from Sharando High School. Andy has been on the football team all four years. He received an academic letter for varsity football. Andy has worked for Valerie Hill Vineyard doing landscaping and grounds work. He currently works in the shipping department at CarQuest Distribution Center. Andy plans to become a lineman and begin an electrical field training program. We congratulate each and every one of you for what lies ahead. And may God be a part of all that you do each day. Let us show our congratulations. Good morning. I'm George Schember and I'm with the Rachel Bayless Scholarship Committee. <clears throat> I just have a few things to say about this particular scholarship. This was set up around 1990 by Bill and Yvonne Clater, longtime members of this church, in memory of Yvonne and Roy Bayless's mother, Rachel. At the outset of the scholarship, the Claters gave quite a bit of money to get it going. And over the years, church members have done the same. And we also encourage other members or other people from any walks of life to also contribute to the scholarship. This year we have five recipients and I will read their names if they can come ahead. This is just a piece of paper. There's no money here folks, but you'll get a check later in the summer. And uh, not you, the financial officer of the institution where you're going to attend. The first person, uh, this the order that I have because I only have four certificates. We have five recipients. We had Mr. Jack Youngblood down here. 
come forward, please? <laughs> we had a mix-up this morning. Um, Jack's certificate was actually given to his father this morning. Uh, <laughs> but this is it. This, 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 is, this is the real world, folks. <laughs> okay. okay, the next, we have four more certificates. Okay, Rachel Burton, please come forward. Next one is Kristen Blake. Ah. Come on, run up here, Kristen. You're the record holder. <laughs> you know when to run up here. Anna Marie Kelly. Eric Reed. Where's that basketball? <laughs> The Old Testament lesson is Psalm 
chapter 1, found on page 424 of your Pew Bible. The two ways. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers, but their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they may meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. The wicked are not so, but are like chafe that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Shirley. Our New Testament lesson this morning is from the letter to the Ephesians, the first chapter, verses 15 through 23. You may follow along in your pew Bible on page 949, but I'm going to read from the message this morning, so you may be a little ahead or a little behind, depending on where we are. So here, Ephesians from the message. That's why when I heard of the solid trust you have in the Master Jesus and your outpouring of love to all the followers of Jesus, I couldn't stop thanking God for you. Every time I prayed, I'd think of you and give thanks. But I do more than thank. I ask. Ask the God of our Master, Jesus Christ, the God of glory, to make you intelligent and discerning in knowing him personally, your eyes focused and clear, so that you can see exactly what it is he is calling you to do. Grasp the immensity of this glorious way of life he has for his followers. Oh, the utter extravagance of his work in us who trust him endless energy, boundless strength. All this energy issues from Christ. God raised him from death and set him on a throne in deep heaven, in charge of running the universe, everything from galaxies to governments, no name and no power exempt from his rule. And not just for the time being, but forever. He is in charge of it all has the final word on everything. At the center of all this, Christ rules the church. The church, you see, is not peripheral to the world. The world is peripheral to the church. The church is Christ's body in which he speaks and acts, by which he fills everything with his presence. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our Lord endures forever. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite the young people to come forward for the children's time. Good to see you all this morning. Thanks for being here and joining me. You know, playground balls have been around a long time. You know, I'm a little bit older than you, but even when I was in school, we always had some playground balls. I don't think we had some with smile faces like that, though. That kind of looks like a pumpkin, doesn't it? But we always had playground balls where we would go out and play kickball. Yeah, come right up here, Cece. And it was great. We had great fun. Do you ever go out at recess? play with the ball like this, do you? Yeah, you kick it really far, try to kick it over somebody's head, yeah. Or maybe you play four square, you play four square at school? Yeah. Your mom likes to play four square, yes. My wife likes to play four square too, and our kids do, yeah, for sure. So we can use playground balls like this for a lot of things. And when we're on a team, it's all for one and one for all, or one for all and all for one. Because when we are on a team, be it 
a kickball team or a soccer team or a football team or a gymnastics team or a cheerleading team. We try to give our very best to the team so the team will be stronger. Right, Miss Reed? Yeah, for sure. Right, Kristen? Where'd she go? Yes. You know, we have a lot of young people. Hannah on the volleyball team, we have a lot of young people on our teams. Rachel, that's what I said. And when we give our best to the team, then the team is better. And when the team is really working hard, they lift us up as well. Sometimes we get down when we're on a team. But when we have a team around us to encourage us and to rally us, oh yes, they can be a great encouragement to us. So, if one for all, we make the team better, and all for one, the team makes us better. Well, that's the way it is here at the church, too. We're like a big team. We're individual people. We all have individual feelings. We have different journeys. We bring all kinds of gifts and opinions, and we share them with one another. And because we do, the team is stronger. But it's really key that we have to give our best and share our gifts and our feelings and opinions. And when we do, we also have this great team around us, the church, our church family, we call it, that encourages us sometimes when we get down. Today is one of these days when we're celebrating as a church and as a team. Oh, a lot is going on. You saw young people up here. We are celebrating with them in all their accomplishments, in all of the good things that are awaiting them. And we want them to continue to be part of the team. And in a little while, we're going to have another group of young people, four years younger than those other folks, eighth graders, who we call our confirmation class. They're also a part of the team and have been a part of the team for a long time. And we need them to continue to be a part of the team. Because it's one for all and all for one. We make the team stronger when we share together. And we thank you for being here today to share with us. Let's pray. Dear God, we celebrate with one another, giving thanks for this team that is called the church. Help us to give our best to you and each other and for the team to encourage us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our hymn is How Firm a Foundation. CC. That's for you.
Thank you. You may be seated. Please pray with me. We thank you, Almighty God, for the life of Jesus among us and that he reigns in power for us. Strengthen our hope and bless the work of our hands that we may live as his body in this world. Enlighten the eyes of our hearts and grant us a spirit of wisdom and revelation, a dedication of heart, mind, and will as we share your word and as you nurture our relationships within this fellowship of believers. Through Christ our Savior, we pray. Amen. When I look back over my life of 55 and a half years, short or long as it may be, depending on your age, stage, and perspective, I recall and am overwhelmed by particular days that stand out within my pilgrimage. Birthdays and holidays, anniversaries and holy days, milestones and new beginnings, graduations and weddings and shared family events, church happenings, special occasions that wrap their arms around me yet, even as the years have passed. Some memories, you see, just don't fade with the years but are as bright today as they were then because of their distinct nature. Grand days, I like to call them. Well, this is a grand day in the life of our church in so many ways and through so many personalities and relationships. It is almost mind-boggling and indeed heartwarming for sure. Today we give thanks for mothers and for women of faith who touch our lives directly, leaving particular imprints through nurture and kindness and care and steadfastness. We give thanks for graduating seniors who with their families have reached another marker on their journey of life. We give thanks for young people who are publicly professing their Christian faith, confirming long-held promises made on their behalf, and commissioned for discipleship as the stream of their faith and service widens and deepens into what we pray will be a fervent witness. And we give thanks to the Lord God Almighty, as we rejoice in the ascension of Christ 40 days after Easter, kicking the mission of the church into high gear, empowered by the Spirit whom we expect and await an encounter. What a morning indeed it is! No wonder we sing and pray, open the eyes of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. For we would like the eyes of our hearts to provide us with intelligence and discernment, clarity of vision and call, sense of purpose and passion, a remarkable grasp of God's power at work in us as we celebrate our faith and our shared lives on a grand day, made ever more remarkable because we are here together. As the scriptures say, you can see exactly what it is he is calling you to do. Grasp the immensity of this glorious way of life he has for his followers. Oh, the utter extravagance of his work in us who trust him. Endless energy, boundless strength. We believe that all of this energy comes from Christ, not simply from us, or we would run out and run down. We would be depleted and drained. The church would have died out years ago. And yet the witness continues. Maybe not in ways that some of us learn growing up. Not in the manner we might have expected or may desire. Not in the way it has always been done. But in fresh ways that are resilient 
and cross barriers and boundaries long holding us back and in. So an important question for us to ask ourselves this day is, how is God's power working in me and in us? Do you ever stop and think about that? What is God up to in your life and in this so-called team's life, the church, the all-for-one, one-for-all fellowship of believers, the community of faith, maybe most aptly known as the body of Christ? For the church is Christ's body in which he speaks and acts, by which he fills everything with his presence. In his story, You Are Special, author Max Lucado tells of the Wemmicks, uniquely crafted wooden people carved by Eli, the woodworker. Every day, the Wemmicks give one another stickers, golden stars for good looks and fine talents, gray dots for everything that is less than. One Wemmick in particular named Punchinello accumulates only dots, a lot of them, which makes him very sad. One day, Punchinello meets a Wemmick to whom no stickers stick, neither the golden stars nor the gray dots. He asks her how that can be, and she explains that she visits her creator, Eli, every day. Eli helps her know who she truly is. He affirms her as special, and because of that affirmation, the stickers don't stick. As Eli says, the stickers only stick if they matter to you. How often do you and I allow the way of the world to define us rather than God's way illustrated for us in Psalm 1, which Shirley read. What would our lives be like? What would the world be like if we all visited our Creator before heading out in the world each morning? What if we truly thought about God's power at work in us, what the eyes of our hearts are telling us to do, how to act, how to serve, how to practice our faith. None of us, not anticipated graduates, not confirmation students, not mentors, parents, or grandparents, not elders, teachers, or pastors, should think that any of these young people have arrived at their destination in life, have got it all together, have all that they need in faith and of faith, have reached some sort of pinnacle, as the Apostle Paul often says, by no means. Graduation, confirmation, even on the grandest of days, is but another milepost along the inner state of life, with signs reminding us, yes, of achievements and accomplishments to be celebrated, but with an ever-unfolding, developing journey before you and before us. As we reminded our confirmation students this morning, we want them to know that we are there for them. We have been there. I baptize six of the nine today and will baptize the seventh this morning. And we will be there wherever they go on their journey. We want them to know that God wraps them in arms of love and grace and kindness through these people who are cheering them on today and into the future. Again, at my age, 55 and a half, I've not arrived. I am not called to be comfortable and complacent at where I am. I should never be satisfied because I can still learn, I can still grow, I still need change 
and transformation. To be who the Lord wants me to be, God's power working within me. I still got a long way to go, my faith ever evolving. And the foundation of God's word, which we sang about moments ago, is only a strength when I allow it to transform me and you allow it to transform you. So I would suggest to you that neither graduation or confirmation is a culmination, but rather a new launch into the future. For both graduation and confirmation are opportunities to celebrate what has been acquired and gained, and then to get serious about who we are as children of God, as disciples of Jesus looking to the power at work within for inspiration today and direction into the future. But you and I, the older, more mature folks, we don't need to be graduating seniors or confirmation seekers to know that change is all about us, and we need it too. Each of us needs the eyes of our hearts open, dear friends. Each of us needs to consider how we practice our faith each day. Each of us needs to dig deeply in how we live in the law of the Lord. Again, Psalm 1 says that to us. Each of us needs to explore how our mission, God's mission, one for all and all for one, can be kick-started through you and through me and the church. For where is the Holy Spirit kicking our mission into high gear? Well, today, it's right here and now where we're at in worship, studying God's Word together, being called and prompted and reminded by the Spirit that, yes, we're all disciples, just like these young people professing their faith, these young people graduating from high school, and all of us are in it together that we might glorify and honor our living God, knowing that God's power is at work in us. Amen and amen. We are so privileged to gather today, this grand day, to celebrate with one another and to share our faith and our gifts. So I invite you to offer your tithes and gifts as we dedicate our morning offerings. We will sing the hymn 691, Lord, When I Came Into This Life, a hymn of dedication, ordination, and confirmation will remain seated.
Let us pray. Almighty God, we are so blessed on this grand day to share together in this time of worship, lifting our praise to you, honoring you with our gifts and with our lives. Truly bless us in our continuing service, knowing that your power is at work within us to abide, to bless, to share as we go into the world as your servants to do justice and love kindness and to walk humbly with you, our God. It is in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. On behalf of the session, our confirmation commissioning team, the covenant partners, and the church, I am honored and privileged to present Elise Bonacore, Cheyenne Burton, Sydney Burton, Caleb Cooper, Brianna Daggett, Wyatt Deck, Kat Kibler, Jonathan Lightcap, and Chase Pierce as they profess their faith with eight confirming their parents' baptismal promises and one being baptized today. Confirmation commissioning affirms an individual's initiation into the Church of Jesus Christ. It calls forth a personal witness to faith in Jesus Christ as God's Son. Such faith is entered into by a turning away from sin and a renunciation of evil and by turning toward Jesus Christ as God's provision for our salvation. This rite of initiation includes prayers for the candidates, continuing life with Christ, the blessing of the Holy Spirit through the laying on of hands, and the offering of a lighted candle, which symbolizes the candidate's enlightenment of faith. The candle also represents the call to enter society as a witness to the power of God to dispel the world's darkness. Each of these young people has been faithful in attending study sessions and completing assignments. They have participated in mission activities. They have witnessed to their faith before the session and now assemble to make public their intention to turn from evil and to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Hear these words from Holy Scripture. You are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Build upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also were built into it for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, that you may declare the wonderful deeds of God who called you out of darkness into God's marvelous light. For you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hid. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a bushel, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Brianna, Sydney, Cheyenne, Elise, Kat, Wyatt, Chase, Caleb, and Jonathan. Now as you publicly declare your faith, I ask you to reject sin, to profess your faith in Christ, and to confess the faith of the church, the faith in which you are baptized. Respond to these questions, please, in the affirmative. Do you renounce evil and its power in the world, which defies God's righteousness and love? Do you? Do you renounce the ways of sin that separate you from the love of God? Do you? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and your Savior? Do you? 
And do you intend to be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love to your life's end? Do you? Will the congregation please stand? Do we, the people of the church, promise to share with these new disciples the good news of the gospel, to help them know what Christ commands, and by our fellowship, strengthen their ties with the household of God? Do we? We do. Confirmation commissioning is a right that instructs us that our faith must be renewed in order to remain effective. Therefore, let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our pledge of faith as we share in saying the Apostles' Creed that's found on page 35 in your hymnals. Let us say what we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Elise, I invite you to come over. Today, Elise will be baptized as an outward and visible sign of the inward and spiritual grace working within her that has led her today to publicly profess her faith along with these other young people. Let us pray. Gracious God, through water and the Spirit, you claim your servants as your own. You cleanse them of their sins and give them new life and bind them to your service. Renew this covenant that you make in baptism. Send forth your Holy Spirit upon Elise and upon all who are baptized as we remember and rejoice in our baptism today knowing that through our baptism, we indeed belong to you, and that it is a glorious and gracious sign of your sovereignty, of your grace, that you love us before we love you. In the name of Christ, we pray. Elise Nicole, child of the covenant, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Ever living God, Guard these your servants with your protecting hand, and let your Holy Spirit be with them forever. Lead them to know and obey your word, that they may serve you in this life and dwell with you in the life to come. Uphold them by your Holy Spirit. Daily increase in them your gifts of grace, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, we pray. Amen. Since ancient times, the laying on of hands has been associated 
with individuals being confirmed into the church. This symbolic gesture invokes the blessing of the Holy Spirit for the continuing nurture of the candidate's life of faith. The offering of a lighted candle has also long been associated with the work of God's grace to quicken faith. The flame symbolizes the passage of the believer from darkness into the light of life. As professing, confirmed members of the Church of Jesus Christ, of Opecan Presbyterian Church, we warmly and joyously welcome you to this shared ministry. And we remind you, whatever you do in word or in deed, do everything in the name of and for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord, who has claimed you and called you and commissioned you in faith. Amen. I think we will applaud for these young people. There will be a fellowship reception in the gathering area in honor of these nine young people along with our graduating seniors. So please join us for that special time of celebration. Thank you all. I invite you to turn with me to page 7 as we share our prayer concerns for the day. As you turn there, let me note that yesterday was a very active day for folks from Opecan with many moving parts. We had a good many people out at our community garden at Hedgebrook Farm, tilling and filling, we were told, planting seeds, for the upcoming year. We also had people over at Highland Food Pantry who were responding to the bounty of food that came in through our mail carriers and through people in our neighborhoods and community. And there were a good many of us down in Harrisonburg at Trinity Presbyterian Church as we gathered to celebrate the life and ministry of Donna Kaufman a much-beloved servant of God who served here at Opecan 
officially as supply pastor while I was on sabbatical in 2006, but also in many wonderful and gracious ways with her husband, Terry. Yesterday's service was indeed a celebration of her life and her family, her nursing career, her ordination as a pastor of the Presbyterian Church, and Terry sends his warmest regards to this family of faith who will always be cherished within their faith journey. As we look to God today, we continue to celebrate graduations from college. Blaine Holman and Cassidy Veach from Virginia Tech just in recent days. Many graduations ongoing within our community, Lord Fairfax, Shenandoah, others upcoming in the week ahead. Please do pray for Victoria DeSalvio, a young lady student at uh, Sharando High School in need of our prayers, Doreen Rickard, uh, many others mentioned in recent weeks. Let us go to our Lord in prayer. Holy God, come into our hearts this morning and give us eyes to see throughout this day all the ways that you rule. Put your resurrecting power to work in our lives and empower us to be faithful witnesses to Christ that our life together may be a song of thanksgiving to you. Embrace us now at the beginning of this new week, for as in every day and every week, there will be ups and downs, joys and disappointments. Thank you for our faith that above it all you rule and that we can trust you as we give this week to you. Do with it what you will and send your Holy Spirit to pull forward threads from today that you will spin into good things tomorrow. Loving God, we give thanks today for mothers and women of faith. Thank you for mothers who gave birth to us and women who have treated us as their own children. You teach us how to be good parents, cherishing and protecting the children among us. Help us to parent lovingly, fairly, wisely, and with great joy. Help us raise our children to be the people they are born to be, especially as we celebrate markers on their journey graduation and confirmation, and offer them back to you again. We need your comfort here today, Lord, because some are missing mothers, some are missing children, some are parted by distance or death. Comfort those who have given up their child for adoption or who chose not to give birth and had an abortion. Comfort those who long to be biological mothers and could not. We pray for those here whose mothers have disappointed them, we ask for grace in relationships where there is pain and bitterness, for healing in relationships where there is abuse and violence. Help our congregation be a space where people can feel welcomed into a family, their gifts and talents appreciated and nurtured. Finally, we pray today for mothers around the world, mothers who cannot feed their children, mothers who are homeless or without a homeland, Mothers who must teach their children about the dangers of bombs and bullets. Help us create a world where mothers can raise their children in peace and plenty. God of mothers and fathers, who created mothers, who came as a child and had a mother, God our parent, loving us with a sweeter and deeper love than we have ever known, hear our prayer this day and our prayers for those we name before you. David Berger, who is awaiting results of medical tests for possible cancer. Give David and his wife, Denise, strength. We pray for Kesa Mena, our brother in Christ, newly elected president of the Ilubor Bethel Synod of Ethiopia. We pray for his leadership and for his family. We pray for graduating seniors from high school and college. We pray for our confirmation class. We pray for Victoria and Doreen and for all others we have shared with you in recent weeks. O oh Lord, hear these heartfelt and faithful prayers spoken in humility and unite us now in the prayer that you have taught your people to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
friends in Christ. Go into the world. Go into this new week knowing that God's power is at work in you to bring him glory and to bring good news to a world in need. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and with those whom you love and with those whom only God loves both this day and always. And let all of God's people with one voice say together, Amen. Amen.